And this coming uh, um, end of the, the November, we are working together with KPLB Kementerian Pembangunan Luar Bandar. Uh, that program is called Sahabat KPLB with Sulam. We um, a group of uh, students and lecturers from UPM are working with this kampung called Kampung Bandar in Banting um, to help with the um, fish ikan siakap penternakan ikan siakap so these uh, le uh, students are from veterinary right so um, disease in siakap huh? disease in siakap they, they're helping the 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 uh, kampung so that is actually sulam and that project is being uh, funded by Kementerian Pembangunan Luar Bandar 20,000 ringgit kan so if you have next year we are going together again with this KPLB right so you can actually uh, propose huh? um, they are working on the Desa Lestari Kampung in Sabah also they have huh? so let's say if you have uh, courses uh, or certain uh, topics that you want to do online right to give access to the students uh, to the kampung give them make the videos first and then the hands-on you have to go to the kampung but that is where you actually bring your students okay okay this one is another way of doing sulam service learning this is actually my 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 own uh, uh, project my own course because in my in in degree in microbiology there is a specific course uh, two credit uh, one credit but no lecture service learning in microbiology so what we did was we worked i worked together with students from uia who's taking tassel Student from USM taking a uh, pre-service teacher for special education. And my students, microbiology. So what we did was, my student is, uh, is the SME, lah, subject matter expert, prepare the content. That content in that uh, in a video and also video and also in uh, PowerPoint slides, we give to the uh, UIA student we never meet the student uh, we never met the students physically or virtually huh? using zoom when we discuss also with the lecturers also using zoom so we give them timeline and they work with the they come up with a module that module we give to uh, work together with the um, students from usm the pre-service teacher and that module we give to the teachers who are teaching the special education it can be as simple as wash your hands if you do, don't wash your hand properly what kind of microbes that will be there you know and or brushing your teeth and we get people from uh, industry come in Colgate okay these companies to actually help us right because um, we want to and and we want the students to actually engage they the one who actually contact contacted the industry uh, make appointments and promote their course right so industries the companies they have their csr program right and that can actually help so now you are involving the trans this is example of transdisciplinary example of service learning examples of using technology for learning right and we sorry we turn it into MOOC that can be accessed to other teachers who are teaching special education right okay we go very fast now now I'm showing you examples, right? Experiential learning. I put that experiential learning. <coughs> Some of you may have seen this, but I want to show how we actually design 
because again majlis anugerah e pembelajaran so we are focusing on how on design your normal activities normal tasks but using e learning okay presentation you have your presentation in powerpoint but turn it into you can also turn into poster poster presentation turn into 3 mt you heard of 3 mt 3 minute thesis tukar jadi 3 minute talk pecha kucha pecha kucha is a japanese style presentation 20 minutes oh sorry 20 slides of images each slide is 20 second total presentation 6 minutes and 40 second right newsletter newsletter it can be as simple as newsletter but nak guna technology with AR augmented reality comics ah, this is pecah kuca my videos technical team cannot see video I tak boleh nak pecah kuca ni Okay, but I just want to show that it's okay. Never mind. Okay, play. Okay. No sound. Sound, sound. Okay, six minutes and forty second. You see, twenty slides of images, twenty second. You see, it can be as simple as. Uh, uh, when we actually do this presentation, don't do it in your class. Do it in the hall. Get other people to come. Showcase, remember? Not show off. Showcase your students. So, we did this from April to June. Lunch hour. Okay, please skip. Cepat nak tak boleh control kat sini. Okay, lunch hour one uh, three three people only present half an hour gone kan so we started in april by the time in april we have only our class but every week every mondays and fridays we have so um then people start talking if there's a pecha kucha in the hall you know we even open it to the to upm and they were saying what pocho pocho no, pecah kucah. Kan? They, they thought. So, after that, by May, by June, the hall, we have 300 people. And these are first semester students. And can you imagine first semester, then they have to present in front of 300 people. There are people who actually up and down, up and down the, the stage. Because nak minum, and then you have to go back, you know, start all over again. But it's okay. Let them make mistakes, remember? So, um... After that, this this uh, um, this uh, habit uh, or, or this exercise is being um, uh, followed by other <coughs> programs also, not only in my groups, right? Okay, I'm sure you have seen this. The popular uh, collaborative um, my map. Has anybody used it before? Yes? Okay, now, you see these colors? Pink color, black, and blue. That shows different students contributing to the same mind map. Right? So, as I said, kalau I dekat, dekat semenanjung ke, and you are here, I have to balik kampung and everything, but you have to finish this task, we still can do it, right? Collaborating to the same mind map. So, use this as part of your flip classroom. Before they come to class, in group, ask them to submit in your LMS. And what do you do the, ne the next day when they come to class? Jangan discuss dulu. Huh? I get, I put them, apa? I, I just pull the whiteboard, the big whiteboard 
and then ask them to download. Download means they have to draw back the, they have to contribute back to the mind map. Remember, they, the first mind map is just to give them an overview okay, of the mind map, of, of the topic. And when during class, they do this. And what do you see? It's a big mess. Can. But it's okay. The point is, when they come, they don't see, but they go out to, from, uh, they, they, they got up, took the pen, took the marker pen and draw. And when they sit, when they sit, they see other friends doing the same thing and they can actually analyze, oh, this is wrong or this is right. And they go up, they got up again and drew on the whiteboard again. Then only you discuss. That will take about 10 minutes here before you start your class. Right? But the effectiveness or the, 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 the impact is very big. <coughs> and that is flip classroom. Okay? Not just flip classroom. I flip already. Yeah? My students are doing, I'm here. That is not flip classroom. Okay? That is you, young flip. <laughs> Okay, kalau ketua jabatan tahu pun dia pun flip lagi. Right? Now, of course, as simple as all these are all using online learning, e-learning and web 2.0, uh, true um, assessment, uh, formative assessment in the class, okay? Or what we call the classroom uh, assessment technique, CAT. Or it can be, I think I like, I, I like to use my map. So my students also follow me to, to use my map, okay? Okay, now, oh, ni sampai ter, 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 apa, terbaling <laughs> spek, excited ni. Now, what do they like most? The, 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 the apa ni? Ladies. But then we want, this one is actually, I did this in 2014. I asked them to take a picture an image of their own, okay? Image, their own image, so that they don't actually uh, fringe, uh, infringement of copyright and all. And then ask them to use this uh, thing link, online tool, to describe about the microbes on the image and share it to the class, right? And this is semester break. During semester break also, we have Assignment and remember the poster with augmented reality, right? So ask them to do poster, normal poster, but then embed with videos, okay? Okay, but they do this in the hall, in the hall, and then when the, they you see, when they are doing it with their friends, that's different environment. But when they have to engage with other people outside their normal classroom with the community, that will be given. That will be giving them different experience. Okay, so we did this uh, for to engage with the community to the school, get the students to explain. Right. And when your students have to explain technical term or in the layman term with the students from school, for example, that will give them another different kind of experience. So this is the newsletter that I mentioned. Okay? And that newsletter also with AR. But it was actually a task. Okay? I asked them to become a journalist, cover an exhibition. Um, video record interview, uh, interview a researcher, and that research, uh, that video to be embedded as AR in the newsletter. Okay, I'm going to go very fast. This one using online uh, uh, Tundu for comics. We publish it the comics. Now, when we actually. We want to pick the curiosity, huh? pick curiosity. 
this is not about e-learning and all, but the way we engage with our students, how to attract them, how to make them curious about what they are learning. When they are curious, they will be interested. Okay? And when they are interested, they, you can ask them to do anything. Even if you don't ask, also they will do for you and for them. That, that's why I say it's very important that not to underestimate your students and they give, will actually give you beyond your expectation, right? Um, I was actually using this for my uh, micro-teaching also in the interview in AN. Um, I should link them this, the cheese and the, and the bread with fungus. And I told them that that fungus can be printed out using 3D printers, right? This one would took about two hours to print. To print them. And this was in 2015. So now, not only that, you can see at the, the fungus on the bread, now you can hold the fungus, right? Aspergillus. This is the fungus. Okay, and how do we scale up? So we create a project called the Awesome Micro Carnival. Huh? This carnival involves the whole, the whole uh, batch of students, right? And with 1,000 visitors that day. So you see the difference. First year students, do the models okay first years the third year uh, the, the third year and the fourth year selling micro based products so at that time i get the lecturers who are teaching uh to come and evaluate them okay so some of them sell cupcakes okay but that cupcake is not 3D printed. <laughs> it's just the, 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 the chips, the group of the microbes. And whatever that they sell, they have to do posters to explain okay, to the visitors. And the other group of students, they have to do this book to, for the visitors. And that book is all about microbes with AR. Okay, with AR. And of course, you have to do um, reflection. Now, this one, there are two, two last things that I, I want to show. One is about this. Gamification. Wait, huh? Okay, this one. Remember that I mentioned how you can actually do projects that can fulfill all your KPI with one project? I'll give you an example. This is a game, 16 people canvas that we actually print out, right? It's called a Laptorinth. This is with AR and QR code and all. We copyright this canvas, these games, and we brought them to the other universities for the students to do. Laptorinth uh, is a game for awareness of leptospirosis, kencing tikus. Right? So people who actually played this game will be uh, the knowledge, uh, awareness. And we copyrighted, we sent for competition, we won goal, we published paper. So you see the students, the students themselves are graduating with degree, copy, with copyrights, with papers. Students need undergraduates. Don't we do the same? We get our copyright, we get our papers, we did our community work. Can? Okay. And the last part, okay. And one more thing, bring your students for competitions. Remember competition, bring, bring, uh, bring them for competitions. Jangan takut untuk kalah. You will, you... The most important thing is experience. 
I think for the past since 2014, I brought them until uh, 2017. Uh, we were the only uh, groups with undergraduates. The rest are all uh, researchers and postgraduates, right? Okay, this one. NASA Space App Challenge. Microbiology students, we, I brought seven groups to the NASA Space App Challenge. What are microbiologists doing in the NASA Space App? Can they themselves also, apa? because I just said, okay, who wants to apa, join NASA Space App? 35 of them wanted to join. But, you know, it's not about, you know, of course the knowledge uh, 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 plays a role, but the, the, the experience that you're going to give them. They work with people, with hackers. Uh, with hackers from other countries, other universities, other agencies. And one of the groups, uh, out of that seven groups, won the uh, Space App Challenge Special, uh, People's Choice Award. Okay, winner of the for People's Choice Award. And always relate your topics to the real life situation. This is, I'm showing you, Nepa. This call is called Bob Squid. Bukan lah squid tu nama Bob. It is a Bob Squid. Okay? Now, when I, this Bob Squid, dia akan bercahaya, luminance. And that luminance come from the, not the sotong. <laughs> the bacteria. Bacteria living with them. Okay? And, Bob Tay Squid, sorry, Bob Tay Squid. So the light, the light will actually protect them. Okay, the light will actually protect them. And how do you make it transdisciplinary? How do you get your students to work on this? Just a simple topic as this. Simple Bob Tay Squid punya cerita. So, now I turn that part into arts work together with students from industrial design. Tak ada video ke? Okay. Okay, that one is to show that because the bacteria, when there are many, uh, the volume of the bacteria is concentrated, then only they will actually luminance, kan? But if only one, then only one, only one of the, what do you call this? Tentacles, uh, kan, that will actually lighten up. So they need a high volume of the bacteria. So that's why. Now, they use this metal, you know, to do the bob squid. Walaupun tak ada rupa sangat macam bob squid, sotong. Okay, and turn into art. You see, this is a virus. A real virus that turn into ni bed lamp, lampu tidur, bed lamp, and then we actually exhibit it the card, nature's yield and wonder of arts. Okay, not only sotong lah. Okay, so the last part is the virtual collaboration uh, skill. Okay, and I have been. I haven't found anyone who would want to explore this. There are only virtual microbes. I haven't seen other virtual. Because this one is actually the work of our lecturers from eight universities, 769 students work together virtually through Zoom and it's paragogy, cybergogy and hutagogy doesn't involve it didn't involve us, the lecturers, during the video conferencing. They discuss and they upload. And they work from people from overseas also. It's called the, uh, from, from apa? this one is from Lafayette okay, University. And I'm studying microbiology. This girl from UM, because eight universities. And he, he took uh, microbiology as an um, elective course. And she is actually a law student. 
law student taking microbiology and ha and that particular semester the assignment was to do virtual microbes so she said I just read very quickly she said the way I study I just look at the presentation lectures take down and then now she has learned a lot I learned to be more responsible tolerate cooperative and team player see all the soft skills are there Okay. Again, how do you engage, get your students to work with other people outside Malaysia? So this one, I get my students to, I just email. Email to the teachers in uh, Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. Two schools, they were doing virtual team among the schools, you know, uh, to teach Spanish. Teach Spanish. So I email to the teachers, let's do a, uh, um, uh, get my students to teach you about microbes. So I brought, uh, we met virtually uh, two, two, uh, twice in one semester and uh, we're just using uh, blank space, uh, Zoom and TouchCast. Okay, this one is TouchCast, using TouchCast, I was using Bloom, using me. So this is during the live um, using Zoom. Okay, I think that's all. One, two, three, satu. Okay, entrepreneurial innovation. Remember, holistic, balance, entrepreneurial. Minik, microbes invention, ideation. Innovation challenge. How do you use your research? Okay, how do you your how do you going to impart the analytical thinking in uh, uh, in your students using research? This project is to get them to do literatures to to read journals and also to come up with a prototype. This is first year students. Now, what they have to do is, they have to identify a problem in any application, right? But it has to be a real problem, supported by documents. Not journals pun tak apa, but documents. And then they have to find one microbes, all microbes to solve that problem. Then they have to come up with a prototype. Right, so one one group of students, for example, at that year there was a apa, wildfire in California. <coughs> Pernah dengar tak? The wildfire in California, and so they created uh, they 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 used it as a problem. They used this microbe, a bacteria, to um, the cloud seeding bacteria, cloud seeding, to stop the the, the small fire first. And they put sensors on the drone. Okay, the drone will actually send through send the bacteria to the place, and they make a prototype. And we actually get industry to come to judge. Uh, get the people from industry to come and to judge. And one of the industries even managed to get to uh, uh, interested in the prototype to work with the students. And this is first year student, first first semester student. Okay, I think uh, and others are all with the communities. Okay, work with the papers, uh, publish uh, uh, the newspapers. Okay, so these are some of the projects that I've done with my student. Some, not all again. And oh, this one I want to share. I have these students who actually said he doesn't she doesn't like my coke at the first semester.
because in the first semester he said I don't know uh, much about microbe I tend to know more about plants and animal okay but so often you find that the students you're trying to inspire are the ones that end up inspiring you okay and people the awards too you don't have to to aim it comes naturally naturally <laughs> after all the transformation that you have to done to do okay 2012 2000 like the mentioned just now um, anugerah pemikiran reka bentuk semula this one redesigning now it become the anugerah YB Menteri Pendidikan Akri right and lastly uh, 2018 the anugerah akademik negara uh, this is my teaching portfolio for AN with AR okay that's my espedilus okay so it's not the strongest of the species that survive nor the intelligence but the ones who most responsive to change and technology will have not will not have any significant impact on students learning until teachers change the way they teach okay so people spark that curiosity fuel with imagination right and let our students to explore learning let us together explore learning with our students okay with that thank you very much dan kini dibuka kepada para hadirin yang diskusi ini adalah sebarang pertanyaan jadi ia juga kepada yang berusaha yang bersama dengan Dato' Wan Zahir Sa'ad Ada? Ada sebarang pertanyaan? Oh ada Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not not the significant, but then maybe to a certain people. Uh, then my question is, how do you motivate? What you tell them? Okay. Um, how you persuade them to complete a particular task, especially using technology? Yes. I need to know maybe uh, the extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Vizi. I think the one thing that I forgot to mention is most of my um, assignments there are a lot of assignments that I give my student are not graded were not graded meaning that not graded not being assessed not not given marks of course the peer uh, a lot of them are peer assessed okay peer assessed uh, peer review um, but the sense making part is very important for example, just now, yang the poster with AR, the first the, in 2014, first semester, that was a project called Thank a Micro. Huh? Sebabnya, when I actually created that that project, because when they actually come in, sorry, when they came came into the class, I asked them. What do you know about microbes? I ask you lah, what do you know about microbe? Microorganism, yes. That's another name for, for microbe. Lagi? Application. What do you know? Generally. Ni dah sampai bawah dah ni. Huh? Probiotic. Example? Ah, yogurt. Vitogen, people. Ah, yakut, right. But when I asked my student that time, what do you know about microbe? They say, diarrhea. They say, 
apa sakit perut Right, really true. That's one of the example. But all the neg negatives, <laughs> Ebola, right, and all those. So I was thinking like, so were they thinking about all the bad things about microbes, right? So that actually started the the thought of doing the project called thank a microbe, right? Divide them into groups: environmental, medical, uh, apa lagi, food. Huh? Agriculture, huh? agriculture, and ask them to find one microbe that give benefits to that application, and then ask them to do that poster, right? So during the process of doing and you know discussing, collecting um, information, doing the videos and everything, they start to get, they start to love, not to love but to like microbes. And they actually know. The most important thing is the the knowledge of the application of that microbes. They know that these are the importance of microbes. When they know the importance of what they are learning, then they start to explore. That's why I said earlier, it's very important first to instill the interest. First class, first semester, I ask them, do you know about watermelon snow? Do you know about watermelon snow? Have you heard of watermelon snow? Yes. Watermelon, yes. <laughs> uh, watermelon dekat uh, dekat Sabah ni ada banyak biji. I haven't found yang tak ada biji ni for seedless ni, Prof. Okay. Watermelon snow is actually snow. What colour is snow? White. White. And this snow, when you step on the snow, it turns pink and red. And it gives the scent of watermelon. Do you know why? Yes, because underneath the snow, there were algae. And it's not red algae, but green algae. Green algae that give red pigments with my, uh, watermelon scented. That's why it's called watermelon snow. When I was doing this, some of them were googling already. <laughs> and then they were saying, oh, come in, the name of the Kamidomonas. It's just the same thing when they come in and then I said, what is the largest bacterium in the world? Of course, of course, Google. 2000, uh, 2007, when you ask that, you will get two days after the next lecture. <laughs> now, if you Google, uh, if you ask, you haven't finished your... Uh, the word at the back, will answer. Tayo Margarita Namibiensis. That's the name of the bacteria that you that is the largest bacteria. From even that name, you can start the whole class ready. Where do you think that was found? No idea. Tayo Margarita Namibiensis. Where do you think it can be found? Namibia. Namibia. <laughs> See? Where's Namibia? <laughs> they do not know Namibia is in Africa, you know? <laughs> because they, learn, they don't learn geography. You see? As simple as that. And then we, we relate. You see? And that, this is not a microbiology class, okay? But <laughs> that bacteria is also called the sulfur, the pearl of Namibia. The sulfur pearl of Namibia. Sulfur pearl. Pearl is a pearl because it glows in, 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 the, in the ocean. It was found in the ocean. Right? So... And really, again, that's how people actually discover and give the name of the bacteria and all, right? So, motivate them through sense-making. Apply application. Uh, uh, sense-making and for them to be able to relate to the real-life situation, importance, okay? We even work with people from the Faculty of Veterinary, Faculty of Medicine, to do competition of infographic, for example, simple, infographic using Canva. 
kan? But that competition is to on the uh, at that time HPV, human papilloma virus, okay? Human papilloma virus. So students organize an infographic competition, put in the social media. The one with most like and all will get will get a certificate and get the industry to come in to to sponsor. But they are the one who's doing it. First, they collaborate with other students from other faculties. They collaborate with the industries. They get the judges, and and that infographic are being uh, showcased and distributed to all. Remember the one that I did with the Lafayette. We came out, the, the end product is a infographic, okay? And we actually um, uh, uh, printed out and we sent to Klinik Klinik Kesihatan because the topic was on the, uh, I can't remember already, on disease, some of the diseases. Okay, so work with community. And, and um, we even work with um, uh, hospitals to do the wall of gravity. Can the anatomy? Oh, I was looking at just now the video. That's why I asked Prof about the museum. Where is that place? Yang ada ada museum anatomy. Ah, huh? sorry. Uh, museum uh, museum uh, uh, faculty medic. Ah, uh. I was thinking get your students to do AR. AR. This when you scan actually the model, uh, then the, the information about that that model through you know through the device. Okay, so motivation through sense making. Okay? And so Allah lain? Yes. Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone and especially to uh, Sir Professor Dr. Magnus. Yeah. Uh, it seems that um, you've been presenting to us all the successful story of this work that you have done and I would like to congratulate you for uh, these things. But Thank somehow you. I believe uh, before you get to this point, you must have um, a successful story. So I would, I would like to know, do you have uh, the main obstacles, especially when engaging students to this so-called um, new era of pedagogy. Uh, so, do you mind sharing the Oh, okay. You see, um, 2000, when you start on, I started using the technology since 2011. At that time, uh, one, I like to do group work. My class is like group grouping, yeah? Not, uh, it is not arranged like this. So, at that time, 2011, one, one uh, group, you can only have one computer. Smartphone pun tak ada, tak ada lagi sangat. Eh? One laptop. Then, you design for one laptop punya work lah. Right. So, the hardship is there at that time. And sometimes, there were times where there is no internet. No aircon. Eh? No aircon. And then, uh, computer is not work was not working at that time and I was I had 60 students and at that time of course they would say oh, no class <laughs> right no class I said no I said so we're going to pull the big whiteboard we're going to do a group quiz for example right 2012 by the time 2012 there will be more 2013 but 2014 was the peak Everybody came in with smartphone, 2014, with, with gadget that is better than us, right? At, at that time, tablet though, very uh, well known. Uh. Then I was thinking, like, okay, so now everybody has. But then I asked, who, who doesn't have a, a, a phone? You know? Okay, everybody has. So that's where we start to design. But, of course, there will be, you know, the challenges... I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm blessed with the students who are always willingly to, to, to participate, to participate. 
um, they even actually bought data data plan for their own group take turns to pay huh? because they just because my class is BYOD being your own device kan you see that's why I say when they are interested they are willing to do beyond your expectation the one of the biggest challenges that I encountered was in 2016 2017 when we did this virtual micro because it's a massive project nearly 800 students right and there are many um, students from other universities in one group eight the most is ten huh? ten different uh, students the challenges are not from my students the challenges are from other other institution because my students are supposed to be sort of like trained from first semester to work hard and you know and they are like all, like forever willing to do and this the, the, the challenge is to get participation from others saying that okay we're going to meet at 10 p.m. today you know somebody didn't turn up kan? so that those are the, the challenges yang rungutan rungutan yang diterima huh? so how to say I um, um, I don't have many uns I don't have actually unsuccessful story except that <laughs> Except that those kind of challenges, uh, based on the the attitudes uh, of of the of the other students, that but not only are the the attitude. My challenges are the the challenges are the educators, not the students. When I wanted to do the virtual microbes, I call one by one, you know, the the lecturers from other universities. Some of them even, siapa suruh buat ni, kan? Oh, tak ada prof. Saya yang buat. UPM suruh buat ke? Tak. Saya kata, like, don't involve me kalau things that I do not know. Well, she, well, in my heart, I was like, I don't need you. I need your student here. <laughs> but then, of course, you know, we respect the professor. But anyway, it's, it, those are the challenges. Huh? And I get when, my, when I got my students to do the Microbe and Earth project, where they have to interview an expert, they get turned down because let's say they were doing on oil spill you know <coughs> the oil spill about the microbes i say also oh, you have to uh, uh, to interview an expert on oil so they got turned down and they tak buat appointment ke apa ke kena marah and everything ada yang nangis nangis you know cry because you know doctor you know came to me and cry because they, they were turned down you know they were they were scolded Yes. Okay. Then we, uh, you know, we uh, console them and you know persuade them. It's okay. You know, these are all the learning process. Even, even you know, nanti in the in your in your office in your working environment is going to be worse, yeah. uh, So those are the experience they learn from the experience, and we learn from them also, right? I, uh, for example, the one that I asked them to interview an expert, they even do Skype. Skype uh, interview the lecturer from Unimas, for example, right? So that's why I say we we do not underestimate them. We work together with them, and it's very important that our excitement, our enthusiasm for learning, to be contagious. Microbiologists, can? <laughs> <laughs> and all of all of them must be infected <laughs> okay okay thank you very much